Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan in association with Sabre, supporting Britain's reservists and employers. It's about half past one in the morning, touched down in Kandahar about an hour ago. Apparently there are 10,000 troops stationed here, mostly American but Dutch, Canadian, UK troops as well. We've been drilled with what to do if we come under mortar attack. Basically it's uh, crouch down, put on your helmet and your body armour and get behind a blast wall. Now the blast walls, well, I'm actually stood by one right now, they're long walls that separate each camp. They call them 50-50 walls because you've got to take your choice of which side you get behind, and if you choose the wrong side, then you could be in some trouble. And one of the senior military guys, I didn't quite catch his name, just given a briefing and told everybody here that under no circumstances can they turn on their mobile phones. Now that's because the Taliban in the past have picked up on the mobile signals when the phone is turned on. They're then able to get hold of the numbers that are stored inside the phone and they then call friends and family of the British service personnel back home and basically threaten them or scare them and tell them lies about how they're doing, whether they've been injured or killed or taken hostage. So um, I have now turned off my iPhone. The next morning, we were taken to see Group Commander Bambi Thwaites. No, unfortunately, it's not his real name, but Bambi is the commander of 904 Expeditionary Air Wing. It's a section of the Royal Air Force stationed at Kandahar, where it controls all the RAF operations from the base. We chatted over a nice cup of tea about some of the less obvious achievements of the British military in Kandahar. Now, the big story here, which always makes me laugh, the uh, commander of CAF, when I arrived, he told me the story about the pon pomegranates because you knew, obviously know that this region is perfect for growing pomegranates. The slight problem they had was actually packaging them. So what they used to do is bring pomegranates here, show them on an aircraft, take them over to Dubai where they package them and then they used to distribute them. So Ashley's idea was, hey, why don't we build a packaging factory? Weird. But they built a packaging factory in Kandahar and the intention is that will be active by the end of this year. <coughs> They'll package and then deliver out from here. So it's again trying to, trying to help them export something they've never exported properly before um, and, and grow that piece away from the Canton narcotics piece. Well, we're now on the edge of Kandahar Air Base with uh, a few of the guys from the RAF Regiment. Now, the, these guys are basically the RAF soldiers who guard Kandahar Airfield, um, and it is freezing cold. It must be about minus two or three already, and it's not even that late. Um, now, these guys are bedding into their mortar pits for the evening. The pits themselves are about six metres by three metres and about a metre deep. Um, and the lads stay here from sunset to sunrise. Now I'm told the name of the game is to sit and wait, and wait, and wait, basically until a patrol eventually calls on you for help, either to launch a round of the high explosive uh, to attack the enemy, or more commonly to fire off some loom, which basically lights up the sky so they can get a, a clearer picture of what's happening on the ground. Well, it seems we're in luck. A patrol's radioed in a request for them to uh, literally light up the sky. Now we're standing just a few feet away from the mortar and we've been told to stick our fingers in our ears just before they fire the mortars to, to save our ears. Flight Lieutenant Jim Baldwin was in command of this small team. After the ringing in my ears came to a stop, I asked him about the other roles he and his men from the RAF regiment undertook at Kandahar. The squadron does regularly, probably about once a week, uh, med cap patrols where they take out medics and dentists and go into the villages and um, uh, provide aid to the local villages there. There's uh, been a number of children they've actually saved who probably wouldn't have lasted through the rest of the week if they hadn't gone out, which is quite, quite a good thing to hear that side and then also the simic as well taking out blankets lots of winter clothing and items like that to prepare them for the winter which was quite a big push just before all of this came in jack fm's greg burke in afghanistan in association with saber to find out more about employing members of the reserve forces log on to www.saber.mod.uk